Hello, it's Dips here and I'm back again with a new video in my creative card making tutorial series. I'm going to show you how to make this pretty mosaic style birthday card with no rubber stamping required. It just uses some lovely patterned paper and pretty embellishments combined with simple mattering and layering featured scallop circle and beveled square die cuts. I'm using Tonic Studio's layering die sets for this, but I'm also going to show you how to adapt this card making idea using Spellbinder's labels dies too. Also, although this is a no stamp required card layout, you could use stamped images instead too, if that was your preference. You be you. Okay, let's get started with a quick run through of the dies and materials I used to make this card. First off, I picked a couple of sheets of patterned card stock. I chose these ones in particular as they feature several small motifs which are the perfect size for this project and they're also double sided with a repeat pattern to the reverse which will come in handy too. For my backing mats and layers I used a sheet of old gold metallic paper and a sheet of rusty red glitter card. Finally for my card base and for the scallop circle and bevel square frames I have an A3 sheet of opal star dream cardstock plus a leftover off cut as the A3 sheet alone is not quite enough. I'm going to use two die sets and these are by Tonic Studios. This is not a sponsored video but I did used to blog for Tonic Studios and I received these dies from them during that time. For my toppers I used a circle die from Tonic Scallop Circle Layering Dies and this specific one cuts out a 4.5cm or 1.75 inch circle plus two dies from Tonic Square Layering Die Set which have an elegant bevelled edge and the larger square is 6cm or just over 2.25 inches. However you can use any similar shaped and sized dies for this card. For example, here you can see that I've made a slightly different frame with a Spellbinders Labels die along with a Spellbinders Scallop Circle. And if I pop it onto the card, you can see that this would work very nicely too. I'm going to use a butterfly die to cut an embellishment and this one is from Tonic's Ringlet Rest Butterfly Die Set. My other embellishments include a coordinating pair of handmade hat pins and I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to make these. I'll link that below. Plus a small satin ribbon bow. I've sewn a mother of pearl heart button onto this crochet flower. And I have a few stems of pretty mulberry paper flowers including cherry blossoms and rosebuds. As well as the paper flowers I will also use some flat back pearls and a crystal swirl to decorate the finished card. You'll find a list of all the dies and materials I've used for this card in the description box below. Please do subscribe to my channel for more video craft tutorials and give this one a thumbs up if you enjoy it. So to start I scored the A3 card in half and folded it over. Then I also used my scoreboard to work out where to trim the folded card to create a base that's 29.7cm or 117 11 inches square. And I prefer to use my guillotine when cutting through a double layer of card like this. Set aside the card base and trim the off cut in half along the score line. So for this card, instead of creating a set of mats and putting different toppers onto them, I use my dies to create a set of identical mini frames with apertures. Can you see, I place the circle die centrally within the larger of the two square dies. My tip for making sure that each frame and aperture is identical is to use low tack tape to secure these together and keep this in place for each of the nine frames. Once I was happy that the two dies were spaced evenly, I popped them onto my first piece of off cut card and the low tack tape kept them in place. You don't need to die cut the backing papers for each aperture, but as you can see, you do have space on the cutting mat to be able to do this. And the advantage to it is that you can position the smaller square die over the most interesting elements of the patterns, just like this. Now a quick quiz through the grand calibre to die cut, and then another with the embossing sandwich, and I've got my first aperture frame and focal point. You just need to repeat this process eight more times, but I won't bore you with that. So once I'd cut all my frames, I could work out what size I needed to cut my two mats to layer underneath them. To do this, I laid out three of the frames on top of my card base and measured the gap at the edge. I could then work out the size of the two mats that I needed to cut. 
You can see that I like to use a ruler and my guillotine, so let's quickly fast forward with the cutting of the first mat from the old gold metals paper, followed by the base mat from the glitter card. And you can see that they all layer up very nicely. Finally for the die cutting I used a die to cut out a butterfly embellishment from an off cut of the glitter card. So to layer up the mini frames I turned the frame over so that the upside was facing down and attached four foam sticky pads around the edge of the aperture. Once I'd removed the backing I positioned the frame right side up over the patterned paper making sure I was happy with the positioning and then I sandwiched them together. You can see that I also ran a Pro Marker pen around the edge to help give the frames definition. Once I'd finished all nine frames and layered my mats onto the card base, I marked the centre of the card lightly with pencil. Before sticking anything down, I popped the frames onto the card and worked out the mosaic pattern that I wanted for my final card layout. You can see that I'd embellished one of the frames with a crystal swirl and another with a crochet flower. There, I was happy with that arrangement, so I was ready to stick them into place. I popped more 3D foam onto the back of the frames to raise them up, and you can see I've already stuck down the central frame. I used a little bit of wet glue onto my sticky pads, as this gave me a bit of time to reposition things if necessary. Then I stuck each of the frames down, doing the central row first, followed by the central column. Doing the frames in this order helped me ensure that the frames were spaced evenly. Now to film this I made the card upside down so I do check a couple of times off camera that things are straight but you won't have that issue. Finally I filled in the four corners. Now for the finishing touches. I'd shaped the butterfly with my bone tool and then I added a line of crystals along the body and to form a trail that matches the swirl I used earlier. Next came the mulberry paper flowers. I'd already snipped the stems from the back of these, then I started by sticking the cherry blossom into the corner of the frame using some 3D gel glue on the back, followed by the other flowers working them into a pretty arrangement around the frame. I tucked in my two homemade pin embellishments. Sorry, I'm working upside down to you, but I just couldn't get the bow right working upside down from me. Finally, I popped on three flat back pearls to embellish the card base too. Then I left it for about 20 minutes to allow the glue to set up. So let's take a look at my finished card. Plus a quick peek inside too. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. As well as card making and paper crafts, I also love cake decorating and sugar craft. So please do subscribe to my channel for more video craft tutorials like these. I'm absolutely thrilled when you take the time to comment and ask questions. And can I ask you, is there any other of my cards from my blog that you'd really like to see as a step-by-step -step how to make video? Thank you for spending your precious time with me and bye for now.